Good evening, church. We are so glad that you have chosen to join us on this special evening. Tonight is Holy Friday, or Good Friday, a holy day, a day set aside where we remember what Jesus did for us. We call it Good Friday because it's a night where Jesus proved his love for us by dying for us. But even though it's a good night, it's also a night filled with sadness. A somber and a tragic night. And so tonight, as you join us from wherever you're at, we hope that you come earnestly, willing to remember the sacrifice that Jesus made on your behalf and on my behalf. So again, come earnestly, come sincerely, ready to remember that sacrifice on this holy evening. As we prepare ourselves for the service, I want to remind you that Easter Sunday, of course, is uh, this Sunday. We will have a short sunrise service at 8.30. Uh, that will be live on Facebook. And then we will have our big Easter celebration service live at 10.30 a.m. So it's going to be a great service, very joyful. Uh, and we're going to try something fun. We're going to invite you, if you would like, as you're watching that, uh, to post a picture of yourself and your family in the comments of that service. So if you're watching on Facebook, just take a picture of yourself and your family and post that so we can see each other's smiling faces that day. Of course, if you're not comfortable doing that, that's totally fine, but we would encourage it uh, if you're able and willing to do that. But now let us begin this Good Friday service uh, with an open prayer on this evening. Hear now this prayer. Gracious God, on this day we gather to remember the suffering death of Jesus. He was despised and rejected, oppressed and afflicted, wounded for our transgressions. We come overwhelmed by the depth of Jesus' love for us, even when that meant his own suffering and his own death. In his willingness to make us righteous, he gave himself unto death even death on a cross. And so in response to such love and sacrifice, we commit ourselves to being his disciples, seeking to also overcome evil with good and hatred with love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us remember this occasion tonight by singing nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood of Jesus saves us. So let us sing this out this evening.
hear this litany. Lord, when we feel sorry for ourselves and think we have sacrificed so much for others, remind us of what you did for us on the cross. Lord, when our patience wears thin and we are ready to give up, speak to us through the example of your endurance on the cross. Lord, when we get angry and feel like fighting back against those who would be our enemies, Help us, forget, help us remember your words to your enemies from the cross. Father, forgive. Lord, whenever we suffer in any way, keep us near the cross. Lord, when we are afraid to stand up for what is true and honorable, strengthen us with the courage with which you went to the cross. Lord, when we come to the time of death, Uphold us with the assurance that life did not end for you on the cross. Amen. We're going to continue now by singing, Alas, and did my Savior bleed. Hear this song and let us speak to you on this evening. Among themselves and threw dice for my clothing. 
So that is what they did. Standing near the cross were Jesus' mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clovis, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother standing there beside the disciple he loved, he said to her, Dear woman, here is your son. And he said to his disciple, Here is your mother. And from then on the disciple took her into his home. Jesus knew that his mission was now finished. And to fulfill scripture, he said, I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting there, so they soaked it up in a sponge, put it on a hyssop branch, and helped it up to his lips. When Jesus had tasted it, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I think it was at that moment that it felt as though all hope was lost. The darkness, it seemed, had extinguished the light. Chaos seemed to rule the day. Why did the one who brought so much promise of hope and salvation have to suffer and die in this way? Those who followed Jesus the closest watched in horror. They had witnessed his miracles and his healings. They had been inspired by him and believed in his message. Yet despite being foretold by Jesus time and time again, when the events of the crucifixion finally came to pass, the disciples reacted in the same way that any of us would, as human. They reacted in pain, in agony, in sorrow, in fear, even in denial. In the face of sorrow and agony, they grieved. How could this happen to the Son of God? It's not hard to imagine their pain as they wondered where they would go from here. You know, the reason why we gather on Good Friday at Belmont is because we understand that, that we are in too much of a hurry to get to the celebration, to get to the resurrection, that we miss what it took to get us there. It's important on this day that we remember. It's important that we reflect. It's important that we pause. It's certainly not hard for us to imagine right now a world in chaos. We're in an unprecedented time, and no one seems to have the exact answer right now. No one seems to know exactly how we get out of this pandemic we're in. And none of us have ever had to walk this road before. The world is paused and waiting. I read somewhere that uh, up to 50% of the people in the world are either at stay-at-home orders or under lockdown of some sort. But in the hour leading up to Jesus' death, Jesus gave an important insight to us that even applies for us today. In John 16, verse 33, he states, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. I think it's important to note what Jesus did not say here. He did not say, I have overcome the world. Therefore, you will not have any trials or sorrow. And he didn't say, just when things seem really bad, I'm going to swoop in and save you from it. When Jesus said, I have told you all this, if we look back just a few verses, we see what he told the disciples. In verse 20, he says, you will grieve, but your grief will suddenly turn to wonderful joy. And it's easy to skip a step there. It's easy to look past where he said, you will grieve, and just get to the, ooh, sudden joy. But it's important to remember, yes, Jesus brings victory, and yes, Jesus overcomes the world, but we must follow in his path. We must follow the pathway of the cross. I think it's important in that we be careful to not mix the promise of salvation and deliverance with some sort of escapism. When we equate the message of salvation with God keeping anything bad from happening to us, uh, we are either left in disbelief in what we hold true, or in denial that we are actually suffering. Or worse, we may feel ashamed because we have sorrow, or because we have pain. As if we are no longer victors, or something is wrong with us because of our pain. We become disillusioned when we face trials and sorrow. God has called us to the way of victory, the way of overcoming, but the pathway there must follow the pathway of the cross. As we reflect on that pathway tonight, let's understand that there is room for our grief and room for our pain and our sorrows. There's room for our fears and our uncertainty, and yes, even our sin. 
God calls us to walk this pathway right where we are. One of my favorite quotes about suffering comes from theologian N.T. Wright, who writes, Jesus didn't give us an explanation for the pain and sorrow of the world. He comes where the pain is most acute and takes it upon himself. Jesus doesn't explain why there is suffering and death and illness in the world. He brings healing and hope. He doesn't allow the problem of evil to be the subject of a seminar. He allows evil to do its worst to him. He exhausts it, drains it of its power, and he emerges with new life. The disciples were disillusioned because they couldn't yet see how the path to the cross leads to victory. Just as it is difficult for many of us to look out today with anything but fear and anguish. But Jesus turns what we think of power and victory and flips it on its head. The Apostle Paul explains it this way. In the same passage that he writes, the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. He also adds, Remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you were wise in the world's eyes or powerful or wealthy when God called you. Instead, God chose those things the world considers foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. And he chose things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. God chose things despised by the world Things count in nothing at all, and use them to bring to nothing what the world considers important. God uses us in our pain and sorrow. God even uses us in our sin. We don't need to feel shame, and we don't need to live in denial. But to continue on the path of the cross requires more of us. It requires us to surrender. We know that in the hours leading up to the crucifixion, Jesus prayed for God to withhold the bitter cup of sorrows, but he ultimately resigned his will and surrendered to his Father. So we too must learn to surrender to God's will and pathway for us. And finally, the pathway of the cross calls us to endure until the end, but we do not endure without hope. We must always cling to the promise that Jesus gave us. Take heart, for Jesus has overcome the world. In just a moment, we'll sing a song called At the Cross. And I encourage you as we do that, to, as you watch at home, to find the lyrics in the bulletin. And then bring whatever emotions you may be dealing with, whatever struggles you may be having, all of your fears and worries, and come and follow Jesus down the path of the cross. But turn it over to him and surrender to him. And take heart. Don't lose hope because Jesus has overcome the world. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that on this night we remember the sacrifice that you made for us. We thank you that you meet us where we are, Lord. And that we know we can come to you with our pain and our sorrows and our grief, Lord. And that you meet us here. Help us to not lose heart, Lord. Even in this time of so much uncertainty. Help us to continue to trust in you. Help us to continue to follow your pathway. We, God, we know that you are victorious and that you overcome, Lord. Help us to trust in that. In your name we pray. Amen.
crucified my Lord. So please join us as you're able to sing with us on this hymn. Spirit.